In this video, let's look at how to build the popular feature of social media apps where we follow someone and we're added to their list of followers. So the first thing we're gonna do in this video is take a quick peek at the UI. You can see here on the left-hand side, we've just got basically a couple groups, uh, a one on the left and one on the right. And what we have inside of each of these is profile image, where we don't yet have a source for it, a username, uh, which we're gonna make dynamic, and then the number of followers and those following. So basically we're gonna, like this blue button, uh, we're gonna use the template of Instagram with their followers following, and then when we click follow, we're gonna run a workflow that has us um, start to follow a specific user. So let's go ahead and start with step number one where we're gonna look at the data. So basically, here's how this video is gonna go. We're gonna look at the data of what it would take to uh, support this feature so that we have uh, numbers of followers that we can count up. And so when we're on the page of someone, all of their followers get put here. And then we won't go as far as this in this particular video, but we can see how if we click on this, we get a pop-up of stuff that someone is following. Uh, we won't go that far because that's just a repeating group of all of the uh, users who are part of the list of people follow that are following or followers. Uh, and then we will do the workflows for moving that data around for where it needs to go and adding some conditionals on if somebody is already following. So for example, in this case, if we are already following in our example here, what you're gonna see is I'm just gonna have it where we directly unfollow this person right away when we click it. So it's like a, you either click it, you start following, or you click it and then you stop, you unfollow. Uh, but you could see how you could add a pop-up uh, with a couple different options is you know one way to extend this further. And of course, for whatever that you're building this for, uh, you know consider your particular use case and what would make the most sense. So let's get started, enough preamble. Let's go ahead and dive into our data. Uh, this app, we already have um, users with a, a number of things happening with them. Uh, but in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new field for followers. And this is gonna be a list of users and then following. And this will be a list of users that who I'm following versus the followers are the list of those that show up that are, you know, following, uh, if that makes sense. Okay, so with that, that's actually, it's super lightweight. In fact, if anyone is very new to Bubble, um, you know, look at the structure of what it is we're doing here. Because when we build, this is really like a mini feature. And if you're going to build larger features, it's all going to follow the same template where you decide what type of data you're gonna need. And then now we're gonna decide what type of workflows we need. And then we're gonna make uh, the, the, the data dynamic. So let's go ahead and add a workflow here. And when someone clicks follow, basically what I wanna do, let me go, let me note one thing for prior to doing that though, is that I am going to, so if in your app, when someone clicks on the page to go to this page, like what Instagram is doing when I loaded up this page is uh, when I click to this page, the page that I was on prior to this, when I came here, all of these are just templated pages. They all look the same. All that happens is that Instagram is saying, hey, we're dealing with this user, so bring in all of their user data, bring in their profile picture, bring in if they have a story or not, bring in their other stuff. We're going to, in this example, uh, fake-ish, this data, meaning I'm just gonna manually bring it in. So the user, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a search for users and uh, where the first name equals to. And in this case, over in my database, I just wanna show you a little bit what I have set up here. We have, uh, we have these, this A, B, C, D. Let me go ahead and just refresh this because I deleted these fields uh, as part of the example. Okay, so now I have a setup to show these new fields I just created. The other ones were from some testing. Okay, so let's now go back to our, our search here. So we're searching for users. 
where we can see, in this case, I'm just going to have this be user A. So that means that when this is clicked, now I can go and edit. I can use that data. Um, and actually, let me just double check though. So if this big group has this in it, then I want this group to also be set for user type. And we're just going to pass this data on down. So to use the parent groups. Same for this one, might as well go ahead. Okay, cool. So I'm going to now do this step where we have access to that. So I'm going to make changes to a thing. The thing that I'm going to make a change to is the parent groups user. So perfect. Now, what do I want to change? Well, th this person in this example is like this, this uh, account here. So um, we want to add the current user as a follower. So for the followers, we're going to add the current user. And then also, as the current user, we're going to make changes to the current user. In their list of following, now we're going to add the parent groups user. So that when, if we were to leave this account, go to our current users, like our own profile, and look at the ones we were following, this account would show up there. Or in our case, the user A would show up in our, our current user's account. So um, that's basically it for the workflow. Let's go ahead and add some dynamic values to this page. So if you are setting up something like uh, you know, a page like this, this is just included for knowing that if you are building something for social media because you're building like a follower type of thing, then anytime someone comes to this page, you'll want to pipe the data through to uh, so that you have a template of the page, right? But then depending on which user is being viewed, then you have the you know correct user being viewed. So I'm gonna go with photo one here, and then we'll just get all this dynamic. And you might have a username value there, but I'm gonna go with that. Here, I'm gonna say, followers and following. Now, oh yeah, also make let's make that count for both of these. Cool. So you might want to format like if uh, you know if they have a certain amount of users or whatever, then the format changes. But you know you can just uh, add a conditional to that over here and change the text based on you know what if somebody's above you know whatever it is a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. Um, type of thing. Okay, so we have that wired up. Now, I want to also point out, though, that when we click, we can refresh this, but, and we have our um, data working. So if we were to click this, it would update. However, this follow button would still be this kind of filled in purple. So what I want to do is, um, we're just going to add a conditional to this. And the conditionals be when the parent group's users followers contains the current user. Well, then there's a couple things I would want to do. Background style and border style. So I'll turn on a border. I'll remove the flat color. We'll give it a border width. We'll give it a border color. Uh, let's see, actually, no, we want, let's, no, not a flat, okay, it's the text color, that's what, the font, the font color we want to change, because it's, uh, you'd be the same color as the background, which we don't want. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure that we're running this. So we're looking at user A stuff here, so we're going to go and run this as user B. And we're going to watch this step by step on our, as we click this. So see, we'll make the changes. We add the current user to the parent group's users. 
list of followers. Okay, and so we saw that update where this now says, I suppose the text should say following because that's what it would say. Uh, you wouldn't direct someone to follow it. But so now their follower count has gone up by one. And then if we looked at, let's go refresh this data. If we looked at user B, for who they're following, they're now following, apparently user A is, is this Hazel Palmer person uh, as part of our test data set in this uh, database. Okay, so there's a few more things that we'll wanna do and then we'll be done. Um, we'll wanna note, somebody probably already caught this at this point, but we can see that we only actually wanna run this when the page group users Let's see, when their followers doesn't contain the current user. And when it does, so let's think about this. When it does contain it, it means that when we click this button, we actually want that person to unfollow them. Unfollow in our world means just remove them. So instead of add, we'll remove the current user. And for here, we'll remove it. And let me just go ahead. So that, that takes care of all the logic updates we need to make there. But I want to also just add this thing for this text here. It'll say follow, follow. And so let's see this in action. And then we'll do a few tests. And we will celebrate having a working um, follower button. So let me go ahead and click that. Cool. And let's just go ahead and turn this on normal so we can kind of see it go fast. So there we follow, there we unfollow. Cool. And, you know, in the UI, you might make it so that these have a uh, fixed width because we can see how we actually don't want them to fit width to... Uh... It's fitting the width to the content and that's why you get the, the jump there. But you know, for now, we'll call it good. So now let's uh, let's go ahead and log in as one other user. Let's go log in as user C. And so this is still user A's data. So now we'll follow from here, and then we'll also run as user D. And we'll follow from here. Okay. So user A has three people following them, which we can see here, and each of these people follows user A. Now, if I were to go and update this data type as our last thing to test here, or the value for this data, rather. So I'll just say user D. And we'll get to look at this page as if we're looking at user Ds. And we can see there they are following one person, and they're following user A in that case. So there you have it. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more great tips about building a bubble, and thanks for watching.